Hi, today we're going to go over the data analysis add-ins to do a t-test with Excel 2010. The first thing you want to do is actually add in the add-ins. Go ahead and click File, and then Options. Click the add-ins on the left-hand side. And then what we're looking for is Analysis Toolpack and Analysis Toolpack VBA. So as you see here, they're already added into my Excel 2010. If you haven't added them in before, they're probably down here. So if you see those analysis tool packs down here, go ahead and click on Go. Under Make sure it says Excel Add-ins and then click on Go. And check these two boxes right here. Once you check them, click OK. And now it will be under your Excel Add-ins. Well, actually it will be under Data. And you'll see Data Analysis over here. So sorry, let me go over that again. It's under Data and then Data Analysis. So to run the t-test, you, you can run a few different types of t-tests, but the two that I'm going to show you today are t-tests that you would use for a pre-test, post-test situation, and um, another one. So I'll, let's go over the pre-test, post-test first. So for that one, you click on Data, and then Data Analysis, and choose t-test paired to sample for means, and then click OK. So for the for this one, you want to make sure that the data that you use is in a certain order. Now, generally with the post-test, it's going to be higher for the post-test and lower for the pre-test for your scores. So you're going to choose, for the variable range, you're going to choose post-test first. So make sure you drag and select all of your post-test results. And then select your pre-test results by dragging. And then here you just change the alpha. So start with 0 0.01 and click OK. Then you get your results. Now remember, it's going to, to do a new sheet for your results. So I recommend actually naming this, um, let's just say results and 0 0.01 so I know what it actually is. Um, and for this one you want to take a look at your T stat and your T criticals. So we have the T stat and the T critical one tail and the T critical two tail. Okay, so because this was a pretest post test, and we know that the direction is going to go up, that we're always going to get a bigger score. Well, not always, but in general, when you give someone training, they're going to improve at least by a little bit. So we know this is just going in one direction. So for that one, because it's going in one direction, we could just do a, a one tail. That's fine. And here we see the, the T stat is bigger than the T critical one tail. Therefore, the, this is a significant finding. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. So that's good. Our findings are significant. But what if down here we had a, let's say we had a 9. Well then the findings would not be significant. Also if we didn't really know if they were going to improve with the, the second variable then we would use a two-tail test so we could see if there was any type of change, negative or positive. Um, you would go with the the t-critical two-tail test and this number here would have to be lower than the t-stat. So if we needed to do a two-tail, because we didn't know what direction the findings were going to be in, then we would need this to be lower. 2.97 would still be a significant finding. However, if this was higher, this was a 9, then it would not be a significant finding. Okay, so that was one type of t-test that you can run, and that's the preferred for pre-test, post-test. However, if you really have no idea wh what direction the findings are going to go into, then um, there's a couple other tests you could run, but let me go ahead and show you those. And I'm going to click on data, and then data analysis. And for this data, I'm going to use the two test, two sample assuming equal variances selection. And it really doesn't matter where I put my data for this one, so you see to enter your data, 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 going to go ahead and select it. 
and then for the second variable I'll go ahead and select it all like so and I'm still going to leave the alpha as 0 0.01 you don't want to increase to 0 0.05 unless you're not finding significance under 0 0.01 so we'll leave it with 0 0.01 for now and take a look alright so for this one we're actually going to use the T critical two tail so here's the T stat don't pay attention to that negative, just kind of see it as 2.31 and T critical 2 tail is 2.76 so that is more than our T stat so we we haven't found significance here let's go ahead and run with 0 0.05 to see if we find significance with that one and I've already done it so let's just take a look All right. So we're doing two tail because we didn't know what direction it was going to go in, and it actually went in a negative direction between the two variables. So we have 2.31, and here our two tail is actually less, so we did have a significant finding for this one. So at 0 0.05, we do find significance. And according to Dr. Valletta, that's good enough for 0 0.05 for our dissertation, so we're good to go with that if we find that with our dissertation study. In summary, just remember, always start with the 0 0.01. Don't go to 0 0.05 unless you don't find significance in 0 0.01 for the alpha. Always do a T-critical two-tail unless your data is just a pre or post and pre and post test. The pre and post test data, that's because you know what direction the data is going to go in. You trained them, you gave them a post test, hopefully they will improve. They should, so you just need the one tail. But if you don't know what direction the data is going to go in, do a two-tail. And also remember, you want to you want to look at the T stat and compare it up against the T critical one tail and the T critical two tail. And you want for significance, you want the T tail or the T stat to be larger than the T critical one tail or the T critical two tail. So this needs to be the bigger one. Doesn't matter if it's a negative. Just look at the 2.3 and compare it against the T T critical one tail or the T critical two tail. That's all I have for you. If you if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thanks.